Testing, testing. I must have had, I must have accidentally had my microphone on on my headset that I wasn't wearing it. It was just laying here. So, uh, darn. I hope that didn't annoy too many people. If you can still hear me and I'm not echoing, let me know. Okay, so I'll probably have to edit that part of the video. So what I was getting ready to do was make a piece of Advantech, which is our subfloor. And it is um, 48 inches by 96 inches and it is what I may do is just make a sub floor, floor layer three quarters of an inch thick that's basically let's see if I can make this a, a a group without selecting too many things at once here. Yeah. So I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna show you how we would lay the basically we would take our advantage and then we would start laying it. Well like that but we would do it so that it was on layout so we would start out uh, from down here make sure that we were in the center I should have made my first joist and I'll fix this later but we that's how we would start out I should have made the first joist 15 and a quarter from here and that would have made it this line up in the center as a matter of fact I can just grab all the now that those are groups I can grab all the joist and move it three quarters. Now we're in the center. I don't know if I was, yeah, I'll have to move the end joist back. that now we're good now if I wanted to make if I I think what I'm going to do to save time is I'm just going to make uh, a subfloor layer and but what we would do is we would you know lay these sheets the first row would go like that then the, the second row would start in the center of this one where is the center right there like that and then they would just continue we would just continue on and on until of course it's tongue and groove so you gotta run the whole first row and then start over but you would stagger it like this uh, but I don't really need that for myself I just just need a something that represents that that layer of bulk so I'm gonna actually just make this like a uh, like one big sheet of just I can get back far enough to pull it all the way down I 
all I'm trying to do is uh, represent um, thickness of materials. So when I, this is how I normally do it. I just normally make a a layer that's basically represents all of the subfloor at one time. Like that. Then, then I can. Um, where's my subfloor layer? Do I have one? Yeah, floor, subfloor. I'll put that in. I'll put it in that layer, and then I'll, I, I can turn it off to get it out of the way. Like that. So now I've got to, as soon as SketchUp decides it wants to respond, my computer's getting old and wants to do that every now and then. So <coughs> what I'll have is these uh, is this series of wood walls, like I was talking about earlier, that will that I can put siding on. Where's my exterior walls? There we go. And so I'll have a, and it gives me an opportunity to change up the material. I would have, um, you know, maybe a lap siding down here and some horizontal siding to make this more, look more like stucco or ephus. And then I'll use a narrow siding for the chimney. And then maybe repeat this siding that's down here, up here, but maybe just give it a little bit different color like that and then just to finish out this idea of showing you how we do our floor systems there would be a girder under here where'd my girder go there it is and usually this is going to be like uh, at least two um, LVLs nailed together. In my, in our case, I think I'm going to use three. If I can get my there we go mouse to cooperate, and it'll, it'll center right under. I think I had it worked out to where it. No, it's got to go over. Right in the center of where those lap, like that. Because these joists need to have at least two inches. I like to have three, three inches of bearing. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, and then this wood framed wall that we're going to have here will support that. that and that'll, that'll be your that would be two or three LVLs nailed together laminated veneer lumber uh, and they're 11 and 7 eighths tall and you get them like 20 you can buy them up to 48 feet long I usually get like 24 footers delivered unless I have a specific use for them and then that that would run all the way I quit zooming so quick I'm quick That'll run all the way to there. All the way down. And then I would have a series of piers like these. Concrete, I have the concrete floor, uh, concrete floor. The concrete foundation gap, I dig, we dig footings for these and pour them. And they would be all the way, you know, down under about every seven feet or so. But 
the other thing I'm missing here is bridging and the way that works is you take a 2 by 10 block and let's find the center of our joist that's going to be at 7 feet get me a line across there oh crud and I'm just going to well it would be easy enough just to draw one what that amounts to is a um, a 2 by 10 blocks what have I got inch and a half 1.5 by 9.25 and then you just put them between the joist and I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a block or a group out of that and We'll make it the same as, oops, not that, not treated. And then what you do is you put one on this side of the line. You'll pop a line down the center of your floor system and you'll nail one side on that side of the center. that all about that was weird as soon as my dang computer stops freezing up what is that about oh it's short I got it why is that it's supposed to be 14 and a quarter So this block should be the right length. Yeah. So that's that's what you do. You take and that way you can face nail them. I can face nail this one, then I can turn around and face nail that one. And then start this pattern over again and I can do that what let's just do it at 20 times and we got our blocking <laughs> ran out all the way down to here and that last piece will be shorter because it's at the end. Now what this does is it makes your floor very strong. And I have seen this system of two by tens at 16 inches on center with this bridging, solid bridging, sturdier, less bouncy than floor trusses or um, like WI joists so uh, the old timey ways uh, are, are pretty good really the just the, using real wood joists with the proper bridging bracing uh, will make your floor very strong and uh, this would we would do this on, in the center let's see if I can grab this without without grabbing too much other stuff so we would this should go 14 feet right because let's see if 14 feet gets it there yeah it should be in the center of this oh but then you see these are all going to get moved uh, back because they were offset dang it and I'm going to move them all. But 
because those joists were offset, I need to move these back an inch and a half like that. And that will be a super strong floor system. Like that. You're good now, sorry. Oh, thanks, Cam. I'm just working. I thought I'd just turn on the computer. <laughs> and uh, I didn't think anybody would watch. I just knew I'd have a video when I was done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and run this other wall. Let me turn off my floor framing layer. Oops, all that stuff was supposed to be in the floor framing layer. Oh well, we won't worry about that right now. What I want to do is bring this in. And why did I make that six inches? Yeah, it will be six inches, won't it? So I'm going to bring it in six more. And I'm going to put me a reference line. And <coughs> really annoying when your computer starts to get some age and you're used to working at a certain pace and it starts freezing up on you like that so that wall will come all the way down to there like that and then and I know it's showing siding on the back I just don't want to have to worry about that right now. The siding will only be on the front, obviously. So then this wall will come to here where I step the foundation down. I'm not sure exactly how I would handle this little part right here, but for now I'm going to put me on the line right there. I'm going to bring this on over to here like that. that that gives you an idea of where I plan on and I need to put this stuff in the floor framing layer just to keep my drawing tidy You'll notice it disappear when I when it goes into the correct layer because I have it turned off and that layer turned off. This is supposed to be in there. That. That. And then so now I can turn that all back on. There we go. And we're all straight. So this, see, in some cases, <clears throat> I can show you, will it mess up my camera if I show it to you here? Um, well, I've got this just a little bitty window. Let me see if I can tilt my, see if you can see, oh, I guess you can see the ceiling. That's the way I framed this house. And, um, now I've got to adjust that, Tony. Dang it, Tony, why'd you do that? Um, that's the way I frame my current house. Now, some of my customers' houses, let's see if I can get that adjusted. playing with it 
So on some projects it makes sense to, depending on what this width is, this span that you have to go, let me delete this construction line. Jesus. <laughs> you gotta be in the group that the line is in to delete it. So right here we would have another girder. Out here. Maybe it wouldn't be that long. go back to here and then these piers come up to there you'd have like a treated plate separating them so they wouldn't be sitting right on the concrete There would be a separation between the concrete and the, the girder. And then that girder would be actually moved over. More in line with this side of this wall. But I think for now I'm just going to show it. Right there, that's good enough. Oh gosh, what that jerkiness is is that if I put my mouse on a point in space, it scrolls really fast. But if I'm on, if I'm over, hovering over, then the speed of the scrolling is controllable. So sorry about that, but that's just the way it is. And then I would have the right here. I would have another short wall where's my floor slab uh, just to give you an idea of what that's going to look like so this would be a we'll call it a 2 by 6 wall so call it 4 48 by 6 because it would be a, a 2 by 6 with a OSB half inch or 7 16 OSB on there and it would come up to there. Uh, let me make that a, let me make this a group so I can. Oh, you know what I should do is make that. I should make that part of this group. So what I did was I double clicked on that group to edit it. Then I'm going to paste that back in place inside this group. So now I can isolate this geometry. And I don't want this to be concrete. I'm just going to make it look like OSB for right now. So that wall would. So to make this affordable, I'm, I'm coming up with ways to build um, maybe this beam. So I'm not sure why this is not lining up. should be a group <laughs> what happened to my
So then... This wall... This little short wall right here would just come, up, come on in like that and then continue. Well, actually, what happens now is that the house wall, the garage walls would go down. Where's the new walls? There we go. This wall. What is that? Oh, that, that's funny. A long time ago, I had drawn it coming down. That needs to come down. Well, to there. Some of this is just me trying to figure this out. Yeah, this one. This, what it is, is this wall. This plate right here actually gets separated basically deleted and then the wall this wall would step down that and you, you get these kind of weird spots in here like I'd probably just go ahead and build this whole wall down to that point but that's what this exercise is all about is figuring that out see how I want to do that and then this kind of gives you an idea of how I've got this I'm working on this floor plan where my office is here. I've got a little bathroom and a closet because if I sell this house, this can become a bedroom with its own little suite area. And then you got two other bedrooms with a bathroom and then a master bath and closet and master bath back here. And then in here you got a big living area with a big sloped ceiling, kitchen and dining, just really cool. I'll show you the perspective again before I move on to something else here. And I'm also going to make one large deck out front. Uh, this is kind of weird. This back faces north, so I think I'm going to actually delete this whole deck back here. It's just, and it's real close to a house back here, and it's not going to be very, very pleasant the view is out the front believe it or not this way there's a wooded area across the street and I think I'm gonna have a nice big deck if it doesn't get too weird out here on the front this this whole area it's just gonna I'm gonna make a big a big deck out here you can come sit out on the front porch and so this whole thing's gonna get changed right here Anybody's got any questions before I log off? Hey, Richard, I need you to come to Tennessee and help build it. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I think that's what I'm going to be doing today. All I'm going to be doing on this today. What time is it? 4.22. Good Lord. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. But uh, Richard, if you just joined me, I was trying to... Richard is a good friend of mine from UK. Um, and uh, if Trump says yes, we'll work it out. Maybe I can get Bob Corker, who I know to... I better not be calling on favors online here, should I? People will be calling me out on it. <laughs> we need to get you over here one way or the other. Anyway, I met Richard years ago, and he's a good guy from the UK. Look him up, um, um, his, his YouTube channel. It's pretty cool. Uh, he does a lot of work, a lot of videos with just... I like his style. He doesn't talk. He just shows like he's sort of working with wood and you know the tools and different things uh so the the videos are pretty cool but uh he's big um i know he's laughing because i can't describe his videos <laughs> but i met him at the nra show last year and uh uh was really fun getting to meet him and uh, he's a big Second Amendment support, big gun rights guy. He's, he, he really is a, an American at heart, <laughs> even though he's a, uh, oh, and he was also in the uh, British Army, uh, the SS, isn't it called the SS? For, what, are, what are your special forces? They're not, uh, what's it called, Richard? Remind me, the OSS, or I'm showing my ignorance here. <laughs> Anyway, and um, good guy, and I enjoy his, uh, I enjoy his, I enjoyed spending time with him, me and Barrett, uh, got to spend some time with him uh, during the NRA meeting last year, SAS, thank you, SnopX, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sure I had a few Nazi references in there by accident, <laughs> sorry, Richard, <laughs> but, uh, Good guy, and uh, um, so but I think I'll um, let me see if I've got let me turn my floor system back on here again, and that's that's just what I'm doing here. I'm trying to um, I hate these construction lines. I'm trying to figure out the best way. Where's my floor framing? Here we go. The, the best way sometimes it's funny because you know like this is more affordable just using dimension lumber these two by tens at 16 inches on center with this solid bridging like this is more affordable than any other thing you can come up with uh, it's also in, in this configuration stronger I remember in one of our last projects I, I used these wood eye joists and I'll just show them to you right quick And the, I don't like the deflection on them. They're these things. Um, I've used them a lot over the past. I mean, I've been doing this 40 years, okay? So I've used a lot of this stuff. And they come in all sizes. I'm trying to get a close-up. Um, they come in all sizes, you know, from like 10 inches. Well, you can actually get them from like, they mock, they mimic a two by 10, so that's nine and a quarter. And then a two by ten, which is eleven and a quarter, and then they go to fourteen and sixteen. But the deflection on them, I'm not happy with sometimes. And so, believe it or not, sometimes the deflection on just natural wood is in this configuration. What, Alley Goose? <laughs> I'm vlogging here, girl. I'm just no, kidding. Exactly. Uh, um. Um, so again this is very strong um, I'm always happy uh, when I can save money and get something strong at the same time and check to make sure nobody's oh Richard says 63rd SAS SQN so 
I need to go look that. You should just do a you should do a video sometime, Richard, just on that uh, the the unit you were in. That would be fun. But um, so now I'm looking at this section, which is only I think it's 22 feet, or maybe 24. Let me see. 22. So now I've got this predicament because I can actually, I, can, I think I can run a 14 inch eye joist 22 feet. I'll have to check the spans. Do I have the span tables on my desktop? Where are they? Where are they? See if I can find them right quick without wasting too much time here. Yeah, hey, I got it. Uh, so here's my span tables. Let me go or my this is the whole fifty six page book on these. So it's lagging a little bit here. Let's see where my floor floor joist uh, where is my floor spans? Here we go, page seven. Three, four, five, six. Oh here's your sizes on them. Like I said, nine and a quarter, eleven and seven eighths, uh, fourteen and sixteen inches. And they've got these different series uh, on them that get stronger as you go. But um, you go to page seven, and if I use the, the I, you know, I like this sixty series. You see, it's sixteen inches, a fourteen inch. Let's see if I can zoom in here. A 14 incher will do will go 23 feet six now I don't like so I've got a choice of either using two two by two spans of two by tens or one span of these 14 inch uh, wood eye joists but what that would mean is that I would have this weird mix now there's a the advantage the advantage of uh, that is I don't have to have this center row, which I'm not showing up here. That girder right there is going to have these. I got to put these piers underneath it, and and one of the most expensive things you'll buy on any project are these LVLs, which uh, again is laminated veneer lumber. Um, let's go. Let me show you what they are. They're like eight dollars a foot. LV, LVL. Let's see. Here's your a good picture on, but that's not actually a good picture, is it? Let's go back to some. Let's go back to images and all. Here you can see um, they're basically used as girders and headers. Like here, they're being used as a, that's a micro lamb, which are a lot more expensive. And they're, a micro lamb is something you can pretty much expose, but here's a good picture showing LVLs. And they're very tough. Uh, let's see if I can get a better picture somewhere of them being used. But typically, uh, what I do, what I like to do is I like to drop them. But a lot of times you'll see it like this, where they're, where they are, uh, like here's your LVLs you'll have doubled LVLs and you'll have your wood eye joist running this way with hangers but I like to actually drop the girder and set them on top uh, these hangers can be, can be very expensive uh, you can spend you know 10 bucks a piece on those things uh, depending on what gauge you get so a part of this you know when you it, if you're trying to build a house for yourself and you're trying to value engineer this, it's very important to, to kind of get with somebody like me, me or you know another contractor. You know, I like that, I like that curve right there. Uh, and value engineer. You know, you want your house to be strong, but you don't want to pay, uh, you know, pay big bucks for, you know, individual items. See if I got any questions, any comments. So this would be, in my case, 
if I did use the those wood eye joists to span this whole thing, this whole distance, um, then I'd eliminate this whole series of of, of joists. I mean, uh, piers over here in the middle here and and LVLs for the entire length of this, which is 44 feet this way. So I kind of got myself in a little bit of a pickle trying to decide. Like I definitely want to do this, and I know the guys that helped me frame would probably freak out if I mixed, <laughs> if I mixed them. But I might just do that because what I could do is I could um, I could go ahead and bring this L these LVLs up flush. Like this, and, the, and then those, these joists would butt into it, and I would have hangers on them. But then, let me just show you right quick what it would look like. I think those top cords are like um, they're like 1.5 by three, something like that. And then, so then I'd, you'd have. That would come out like that. Then you'd have another one down at 14. Let's see, 12 and a half. Oops. And then. Probably could have just gone and found one. But it's fun to draw this stuff out. It takes a little more time. So then what happens is crud. You get this, it goes up into it a little ways, comes over comes down, comes over, like that, and then that goes back to there, and then like what I usually do is I'll delete all this stuff so I can just pull the whole thing like this. See, there's a there's your wood eye joist, but you can see kind of how weird that would be. Cause see, that means I'd have to frame this wall lower on this end, and these would be on hangers on on this part. But they would just be on hangers till for this part right here. The rest of it they would be sitting on this wall over here so I gotta decide how I want to do that and but what I would do is I would make this a component I'd make it a group first so I just select it by itself make that a group I can just make a component if I want to and then now I just make it some color different well, it doesn't really matter. Man, I don't like that. We'll just make it the same color as the joist. And so, these would be, the nice thing about these wood eye joists is you have this nice big um, 16. How many more would you have? 20 of them. That would be kind of how you would approach that section. But you have this nice big top cord to nail to. 
and it is more difficult, believe it or not, to hit those. And all these, all these joists will be cut back to this side, and there'll be hangers. So, just some decisions to make there. But that's part of. Um, I like building the house in my head uh, before I get out on the job, and usually. Usually by the time I get this thing uh, modeled to this point, then it's in my head, I can pretty much build it. And um, I like to look at the drawings too much. <laughs> Just pretty much reminding myself as I go where the, what the actual dimensions are. So anyway, I'm going to end it here. I appreciate everybody who showed up to watch. Um, but this should be an interesting project. I'm going, to, I'm going to do a better job doing vlogs on this. And so we're going to hopefully start the footings for it next week. And I will uh, update you then. Thanks a lot, guys.